So we spent some time hopefully getting this to work and for some of us it happened easier than others and for some of us it's a little more difficult but this is, the, this is what happens with this sort of development. Everyone's is a little bit different. Your device is a little different, your computer is different. Again, getting it to work in this environment where everyone's computer is the same, we eliminate some variables. Now when you try to do it on your own computer, well, do you have Windows 10, or do you have Windows 8, or do you have Windows 7, or do you have a Mac? Do you have the driver on your home computer? There's just so many variables. But I'm going to assume we've got it all working. If you still don't, we'll have lab time at the end of the day. But we spent some time, t some time trying to figure this out. What I'm going to do now is give us another handout. I'm going to put another handout into the network folder. So I'm about to add another handout to the network folder. This will be handout number four. So look in the network folder again, and I've got a new item there. If you don't see it right away, close and open the network folder. There's a brand new item there, campus number four, Taco Workflow 1. Get a copy of that to your desktop or flash drive, and you'll be able to print it later. But copy handout number four from my network folder to your computer. Let's look at what my handout says. These are basic workflow number one, then we'll have another workflow. In general, what we're going to do is start to create <coughs> like a, uh, a, a template file that we can use over and over. We're going to do the taco create command again, but we're not going to do it that often because the beauty of taco is we can do taco create template, for example, and use that file over and over and over for future projects. Rather than doing taco create, taco create, taco create, we'll just use that folder. It's all self-contained. It needs some setup first. That's what our handout is here first. After all your components are set up, we will create a basic app to be our template for future apps. So we're going to open Node in a moment. Uh, and notice for number two, I've got a few of the basic command prompt commands that will help us navigate. I didn't mention this one last time, but as you're typing commands and your screen is getting full, sometimes it looks too cluttered. You want to clean your command prompt to empty it? Type CLS to clear the screen. So before we get to that, go ahead and go, if you're not there already, open up your command prompt. My command prompt is open. I have a bunch of stuff there. If you want to see and you type CLS, clear screen, press enter, it clears the screen. Now it does also forget your history, so you can't go back up on the screen, but you can still go up and down on the arrow keys to bring back your previous commands. So clear screen. I have here in my notes CD and then the name of the folder, switches to another folder, type in quotes for folders with spaces. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, that if you're typing CD space program space files, sometimes it'll understand that and sometimes it won't. So to be more safe, I would put it in quotes. What I mean is CD quote program, don't type this, program files in quotes. That often works better than typing this without the quotes. Sometimes it'll think, oh, you want to go into CD program. No, I want to go into CD program files. So to make sure you tell the command prompt exactly what you want, putting it in quotes should obey. CD dot dot goes back one directory. DIR, check the directory listing. Press the up arrow on your keyboard to cycle through commands. Press down to go down in history. And then the, your drive letter doesn't have to be capital, actually your drive letter colon enter which will then switch to your drive to go back to the main hard drive it's the C drive 
my drive I think is F or something so I would type F colon and it would jump to my F drive my flash drive so some basic commands we don't need to know all the command prompt commands these are probably enough for us to navigate and such we need to decide where are we going to save our projects um, I have a flash drive plugged in and I want to save my projects to my flash drive so what I can do I can create directories in the command prompt if I type mkdir make directory space plus a name of a directory I can make a directory now notice in my example I made a directory I made a folder simply called apps because you're gonna need to type commands to jump in and out of folders don't call this folder my apps summer 2016 you're gonna have to type that whole folder name <coughs> so I have it simply set as apps so here's what I'm saying on your command prompt my flash drive happens to be F so I'm gonna switch from my command prompt I'll type F colon enter if you're trying to go to a, a a drive that doesn't exist like K, they'll say there's no such drive as K. So that's how you know you did it wrong. I'm on my F drive and I can type DIR to confirm. It's my flash drive. There's my Corsair 32-bit, 32, 32 gigabyte drive. I'm on my F drive. There's all my folders and stuff. I have to type all of these folder names if I want to successfully navigate through them all. To make it the easiest way, I'm going to recommend at the root level of your USB drive, let's make a folder called apps. Nothing fancier than that because you're going to need to type that name over and over. So I'm on my F drive and we'll type mkdir make directory space apps. Enter. You get no feedback when you, when you do it wrong. You often do get feedback when you do it right. To confirm if you did it right, then you type dir, you should see now you have a brand new directory, a brand new folder called apps. I didn't put a capital letter, I didn't put spaces, I didn't get fancy. I don't recommend you get fancy. Just a very simple folder name, apps. Change directory into that directory, so cd space apps. Enter. You want to be on your F drive in your apps folder. And in this folder is where we're going to then create apps, have them all handy here, work with them, etc. So that was here. Decide where you'll save your projects, create a folder. We did type CD apps to change to the Taco apps folder. We're going to create a template file. Taco create template com.yourlastname.template app name template app so taco space create space template this is about to create a folder called template space com dot your last name dot template so the syntax of this is that this is the name of my app and the name of my folder, mylastname.com. Space quotes. And in the quotes, anything we want, template app. Here I can put capital letters and spaces because it's in quotes. And that'll be the icon name that that'll be the name of the icon that appears below it. We're creating this, this basic template app that we will use over and over. We won't have to do this taco create again in the future. We just copy that folder. We have a new app. Enter. Let it process. Notice it doesn't say hello taco because we specified we specified an app name. If we don't specify an app name, it'll just say hello taco. If we don't specify a package ID, it'll call it io.cordova.hello taco we specified an ID so it says okay here's your unique ID for the app stores type CD template now we need to go into the template folder we just created CD space template 
change directory into the template directory. Press enter. Next we'll type taco platform add Android space browser. There's more than one platform that we can add and we can specify more than one at the same time. We can do taco platform add Android and then we can do taco platform add browser then we can do taco platform add iOS but actually we can say taco platform add Android space browser space iOS space Windows we can specify all the platforms at once if we want that's what this is doing here so we will type taco platform add Android space browser we're adding the Android code and the web browser code this one's optional. Browser's optional, but it's useful for us to debug our app. So I'm adding both Android and the browser at the same time. Enter. Actually, first Android will get added, and then browser will get added sequentially. Yeah, and the other platforms would be Windows and iOS. Yeah, exactly. So. So just to show you, we don't have to do this. We don't have it fully set up, but if we did have our whole environment set up, we could have also done space iOS, space Windows. We can't quite do this. We do not have the iOS software set up, and we don't have the Windows SDK setup, so we wouldn't do this. Taco install Rex Android is not required if you've done it before at least one time. We did it last time. On these computers, it's already set up. On your home computer, you need to do Taco install Rex Android at least once, then you don't have to do install Rex install requirements again. Next, we want to add the we want to add all the plugins. Um, the default is our basic Taco app has no capability to access the cameras of your devices. You cannot access the GPS. It cannot access the file system. It can't really do much by default for security purposes. So we have to explicitly tap into all of these device features. Later on, when we get to month three, well, if we try to upload our completed app as is like here, when someone wants to download the app, it'll say, okay, if you download this app, this will use your camera, your microphone, your uh, contacts, your GPS, blah, blah, blah. And if I'm making a simple calculator app, what does the calculator app need to do with my camera? What does it need to do with my GPS? So here we're asking for all the permissions. And our real app eventually will not need them. We'll need to remove them eventually. The shortcut, to instead of typing all of this, remember in the network folder, all the Cordova plugins are in that text file. Cordova all plugins. So instead of typing it manually, just select, select that whole line of code, copy. And then in the command prompt, don't do control V, it'll just give you the escape character. You want to right click, paste. Press enter on that. Yes, we did this last time. Yes, it's okay to do it one more time for practice. Once that's done, we'll do taco build, and then we'll proceed there. Any of you ever help at this point? We'll do taco build when, when the plugins have been added. Taco build is actually rather optional, because if we do taco run Android, or taco build and uh, taco emulate Android, it will do build first. 
It will compile your app to get it ready and then either emulate it or run it. But I like to do Taco Build once in a while just to get all my files in order. And then the next time I run or emulate, it'll go faster. So you see, the purpose of making this template project is because notice how much time this is taking. And if I wanted to create a brand new app next month or whatever, I perhaps don't want to go through this whole process again. We're creating this template file, which is on my flash drive in my apps folder. That template file is a complete project. All I would need to do at some point is do something like right-click copy, right-click paste, and that'll create a brand new folder based on this template file where I'm ready to go. It's, it's a project with Android code, all permissions, I'm ready to go. So, taco build. By simply saying taco build, it'll automatically compile the code from my Android platform, my browser platform. If I had iOS, it would do it there too. If I had Windows, anything else. Doing taco build will go through the list of all installed platforms and compile them. If I had specified taco build Android, it would only compile my Android code. Okay, so as mine finishes compiling, here's what this next section is going to talk about. There's a special file in our project called config.xml. It's an XML file which is related to HTML. Um, and that defines a lot of aspects about what our app actually is. So as soon as mine is done here, we'll see what all of that means in the config file. Now in my handout, what I've got here is I'm going forward with uh, further editing a few more aspects of my basic template file. Some of these things that we're about to edit here might not apply to every one of your apps. So there's no perfect solution about having this template file to always use. But this one's, a, this one's close. So hopefully you've got back to your command prompt here. Everything's built. Mine took 1 minute 18 seconds. You want to open then a regular Windows Explorer window. Open a regular window. Go to where this project is at. Mine is on my F drive in my apps folder. Go into your template project and you should see a file called config.xml. We're going to right click it and select edit with notepad. Plus plus. Let's edit this Notepad++ file. That is this config file in Notepad. What we have here is 96 lines of code. Doing a very general overview. It's an XML file. XML files often are full of somewhat proprietary tags. We're still going to see tags, pairs of tags, like HTML. 
in over in HTML we had you know the the body tag open and close we had an h1 tag open and close we had an image tag that was self closing here notice we have a widget tag that opens on line 2 and then it closes all the way down on 95 widget is not a valid html tag but it's a perfectly valid xml tag in short one definition of what xml is is the ability for us to invent our own tags invent our own tags and then something will process them so there's these tags that are being invented preference allow intent and what interprets them is our is our taco software then this this code is interpreted to apply to the appropriate platform and such um, widget with various um, <coughs> attributes, ID attribute, version attribute, X, L, M, N, S, attribute, and so forth. ID. Hey, that's what we typed when we typed taco, create template, and then com.yourlastname.template. So you can change your package ID anytime you want. If I wanted to uh, create a brand new project, com.jones.myapp. Changing that makes it a brand new app in the eyes of the App Store. There's a version number. Let's see my handout. On line 2, change version 001 to version whatever, after version, add version code. Okay, so what we're saying here is... This version number actually, this is an arbitrary number. It, it doesn't quite matter what this is, but traditionally we have, you know, the first number is the major version number. The second one is a secondary change, and then the third number is like a minor change. This is the version of our app, 1.3.89. The way I like to do it is, something like that, which is, this is version 1, the very first version of my app. Um, also the 0th version here. And then the minor version is, well, this is the day that I'm working on it. You see, that's a date, 2016-07-07. Let's say I'm working on this project, and then I, I keep working on it this whole month, and then next month I'm going to release it to the App Store. Eventually, when we get to next month, the last day of next month, you know, 829 or whatever that is. I'm going to save that and then release it to the App Store and it has this internal number. Later on, let's say I learn more concepts, I learn more features, I want to add new things to my app, so I'm going to release a new version. Perhaps then I'm going to do version 2. Point, you know, maybe in September I develop a new version. Do you see the scheme of, of my concept of how these version numbers I'm using here? Any number is valid here. Well, let's say I'm going to release a version in September, but it's not going to be like a version 2. Maybe I'm going to reserve version 2 for a brand new interface or a brand new design, you know, a big change. That's what the big, the first number usually is. So something like this could also be valid. In September, I make a new version, so I'll put 1 there, or, or 2, or whatever you want, and then the date. That doesn't quite matter. What does matter, after version, add Android dash version code, notice capital C, equals 1. This is very important. This one has to be in this format, and it has to be a whole number. So after version, we'll add a new attribute. Android dash version code equals 1. This has to start at 1. This is the very first version of our code. When I upload this to Google Play or Amazon App Store or Android or uh, iTunes or whatever, this is the very first version of my code. If I'm going to upload another version to Google Play eventually, it has to then be version 2. Whereas this can be anything I want. Let's say I needed to release a brand new quick version. Oh, I misspelled my name. So I'm going to release a brand new version with, with this. 
version 1.0.2016.0730. I will have to put this to version 2. Google will not let me upload it if it still says version 1. Let's say in September, I'm going to release, after a lot of hard work, version 2.0. Actually, internally, Google will expect that to be version 3 of your code. This is different. This is not exactly the SDK. This is for Google to keep track of what version of the code you've uploaded. So it doesn't exactly relate to SDK. No matter, I mean, if you write something native in Java, mm -hmm. there's a, I'm assuming the SDK has a version of the code thing, right? Well, again, that's the SDK version of the Android code. This is not exactly, this is what Google is expecting as the, as the latest version of your code. Now, you're talking about one thing via the Android Studio and such. It might be different than what we're doing here. Some things we can't mix and match between the two. Yeah, I guess like what I mean is this overrides the SDK I'm not sure. I have to look it up, but I don't believe so because we're doing it in a different way. So if it was iOS or Windows, would it be different? Yeah, it would have its own particular attribute as well, a slightly different syntax but it would have something like that as well. All right, so then there's a spot to add a description and an email and a website on line 5. So notice our description tag says a blank project that uses Apache, Cordova, etc. We can write our own description here. For the moment, I'm going to say our template our Cordova slash taco template project. Author, well that's you. You can put a real or fake email address. There's an attribute for your website. You don't have to have a real website and I suppose what you could do is what if, if you've got a Twitter, I suppose you could put your Twitter address there. So you should put uh, something there. I think we can get by with putting just null, not null, but um, dummy link. But I, I would uh, do something like that. Whatever up at the top is, if you've got com dot your last name, I would just put that address there, even if it's real or not. The name of the developer is between the author tags. Again, you can make this up. I'm going to make up a brand new company called Victor Apps LLC. Doesn't have to be a real company. But when you do this, this is all you really need to become a developer. Write this, save it, and congratulations, you're a developer. <laughs> we'll be fully a developer later on when we create a developer certificate and such. content source index. So this taco project is going to assume the very first screen of your project is index.html. That's fine. If our main screen is home.html, we can change it there. But I wouldn't because the standard is to have index. Access origin, that means we'll be able to access all of the content of our particular folder. Preference name splash screen, preference name Windows target version, preference name Windows phone target version. So here's a few preferences for our app. The defaults are going to be just fine, but here we're saying we're going to use a splash screen on our app. You often see that when you load some app, there's some screen that loads up first before your main app. You know, when I turn on Twitter, the little bird appears for a moment. When I load Snapchat, the little ghost appears for a moment. We're going to do that as well later on. It's optional, but that's a little bit of branding. Someone loads your app, they see your icon, they see some sort of branding. It helps with your marketing and such. If we were also going to create a Windows Phone version of our project, we want to target version 8.1 or Windows operating system. If we're not going to target Windows, we can delete those, but we'll leave them. Maybe we'll make a Windows app one day. Cordova plugin whitelist, don't worry about that. That just means we're using the whitelist, which is allowed 
websites. Then we have allow intent. These are various protocols that our app can tap into. Our app has the ability to open a website externally. Our app has the ability to access a secure website externally. Our app has the ability to dial a phone number, to send a text message, to send an email, and to tap into geolocation features. If we don't want that at all, we can remove that. Platform name Android, platform name iOS. These are various parameters specifically for specific platforms. For the Android platform, the market protocol means that if you create a link in your project, people will be able to open your app. So don't write this, but what I'm saying is, if I wrote http colon yahoo.com, because I've specified I can use this protocol, I can open that link in my app. If I wrote somewhere in my project, market colon, and then a web address or a unique identifier for my app, it can open a particular app in the Google Play app directly. Same thing with iOS. If I add the ITMS uh, protocol as a link, I will be able to open an app in the native app store of the iOS device. It shows it again, platform Android. These can all be tied into one pair of specific platforms, but they've separated it just conceptually. There's a platform section for Android specifically about the icon of your app. There's the low density, medium density, high density, extra high density version of my icon. We can actually look at this. Let's do this. In your folder, it says, in the res folder, there's my res folder, in the icons folder, icons, here's the spot for all of our icons for all of our devices. If you open Android, these are some built-in icons. You can change your icon view right there. So when we had our Hello Taco app loaded up and you look at it in your device, in your apps drawer, there's the little generic uh, Cordova mascot because it's in that folder. Because our XML file is saying, look in this folder and you will find the icons. So later on, and I'll have a handout for you, later on we're going to want to replace those. I don't want to have the generic Cordova icons all the time. I want to have my cool icon that I designed in Photoshop. So we'll have a handout and a lesson to do that later on. But jumping ahead, if you think about it, if I design my own icons and drop them in here and change the code, I have new icons. Even easier, what if I design icons and replace these icons? Then I don't have to change any of the code because my icons will supersede those icons and I'll have a brand new icon. Again, the handout will tell you what dimensions you need. But this is basically a 96 pixel squared image. So if I open up Photoshop, make a brand new icon, 96 pixels, save it as the, that exact same name to replace it, I don't have to edit any of my code, and basically my app will have a brand new icon. Same thing with iOS. But notice iOS, I have to provide a lot more icons. I have to provide a 180 pixel one, 120, and 114 size one because of retina sizes, because of small uh, iOS sizes, of large sizes, of iPads, of all of that. So we have to provide a lot of different size icons. And we have tools that will automate it for uh, for us to create all the sizes for us. We'll talk about that later. There's a section for Windows. Here's all the icons for the Windows devices. Windows operating system, uh, Windows desktop, and Windows phone. And then there's a section for Android splash screens. 
a portrait orientation, and a landscape orientation splash screen. <coughs> if you look on your folder, if you back up to res screens, res resources, if you go back out of the icons folder to the screens folder, Android folder, here's all of the icons, uh, I mean all of the splash screens, <coughs> portrait and landscape for different kinds of devices, low end, uh, low end devices, L, high end devices, extra high devices. So if I open up Photoshop and maybe either edit those icons, splash screens, or make my own splash screen and save it with that exact name, the code will just reference that file and compile it and include it. We'll do that later. Same thing for iOS, same thing for Windows. That's what this XML file is. It basically controls all of these basic aspects of your device, of your app, I mean. So what we need to do further is line 6. Before platform name Android, add preference name orientation value portrait. This is optional, but what I want to do is I want my app to get locked into portrait orientation. Right now, our, our Hello Taco app um, can be portrait or landscape. Maybe I want that for my final project. But I want to show you that we can lock the orientation so that our app is always vertical or always landscape if we want. It's going to be another tag. So, in uh, before platform Android, we're adding it before a specific platform, so that means it'll apply to iPhones, Android phones, etc. So before a specific one, we're going to type um, preference, the preference tag, preference. Uh, preference does not have a pair, but it does have to end with a slash at the end. HTML5 doesn't, and we were not doing that in our files when we were doing image, src, whatever, we were just ending it like that, that's valid at HTML, but that's not valid XML. We have to end it with a slash. So preference name equals either single quotes or double quotes, we'll do double quotes, uh, preference name, orientation capital O, Space. Another um, parameter name and value is portrait. Portrait. We're saying our app, regardless of it being Android or Windows or iOS, whatever, is locked to portrait. You notice the syntax of these things. We're often going to have the name of the tag and a couple of attributes. Plugin name, spec, preference name, value, preference name, value, preference name, value. Then add preference name disavow over disallow over scroll true. What I'm saying there, and there should be a space there, sorry, there should be a space at the end of that. Disallow over scroll is going to be another aspect to make your web project feel much more like a real, quote unquote, real app. Because have you noticed when you visit a website and you scroll to the bottom, and once you get to the bottom of the website and you keep scrolling, you get some sort of feedback, maybe a little glow, or maybe like a little bounce animation, that you've reached the bottom of the website. <coughs> well, this is no longer a website, it's going to be an app. And I don't quite see that on a real app. So disavowing, disallowing over scroll set to true means don't give that animation when you get to the end of the app. Make it feel like a real app. So we're going to add that one 
outside of any platform. So again, we'll do preference. Don't forget the slash. Name equals something. Value equals something. And the something is disallow overscroll. value true. The next one is a is a is a default background color. Behind my app, I will have some background color defined so that I have at least something that I have controlled. There might be instances where the screen, you know, stutters or lags or something, and if you don't set a color, you're going to have a white background, which may be jarring. So if we have a color here, it'll, it's a little more smooth. And notice the way we add the color is a hexadecimal color, so that's going to be 0x, to mark it as hexadecimal, and the very first bit here, or the very first pair, is going to be an alpha, a transparency value. So FF is fully opaque, and then a real color, and that I believe creates some sort of gray color. So next, another preference, another name and value pair, and it's background color. Notice the syntax, not background dash color, that's CSS. Background color, this is specifically for our app value 0x no transparency so that's ff and then whatever color if we wanted a bright red color ff0000 i'm putting a b c d e f which i believe is a gray Inside the platform name Android, now we're going to specify two specific things, two specific SDK values. We're going to specify our app is going to use and it's going to target specific Android devices. Remember when we loaded up last time the, uh, the SDK manager? There was a list of all of the Android versions, API uh, 20, API 10, API 25, all of those versions of Android. The latest one, I believe, is 25, maybe 26. So here, in the Android section, we're going to say our app is compatible with these versions of Android and higher. And we're saying here 14, which I think is 4.0. So yes, we're going to exclude all the poor fools that are still using Android 2. Point whatever, and all the poor fools that are still using Android 3. whatever. We're going to go with 4 and up, because the latest version is 6. 7 is coming out soon. So there's a certain point that we are going to stop caring about the older devices. And that's okay, because even Google themselves stops caring at a certain point. They don't, they don't uh, release software for Android 1.0 anymore, and if you're running anything, I believe, Android 2.2, they don't, they don't care. And we're going to use pretty cool advanced features, so we're going to start at 14 and up. Preference name, Android dash min SDK version, and target SDK version. The target of our device is 14, and our app needs at least, I mean the user's device needs at least Android SDK or API version 14. So Android dash min SDK version. Notice how it's spelled. You have to spell it exactly that way, of course. Uh, I can't hear you. What's that? Oh, yes, 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 good point. Sorry about that. We have to add this inside of the Android, any one of the Android platform sections, because we're specifically targeting Android. 
So um, we'll just add it where it says, where did I say to add it? Add the preference inside platform manager, yes. So in the platform, because we're specifying Android specific stuff, Android min SDK version 14. And then also Android target SDK version. Same target, 14. No, unfortunately, we cannot add comments into an XML file. This one that it expects. Okay, so the last item here in node command prompt type taco emulate Android either to run it in a virtual device or taco run Android to run it on a real device or taco run browser to run it in Chrome. I set up my device so I'm gonna run it in my device. Make sure you save your config file. I'll go to command prompt taco run Android just to be safe. I didn't say it in my handout but in my other handout I said to be safe dash dash device because sometimes if you have a virtual device and a real device and you told it taco run Android sometimes it says okay I'll just run the device it's it's faster here I'm specifically saying run my Android device not my Android virtual device so I'm gonna go back to the home screen of my device and press enter and run it should see through all of the feedback somewhere it should say installing app on device and launching application. This loaded up my project on my app on my device again. It looks the same as every other one. But the difference is look at that. I'm going horizontal. I mean I'm yeah I'm going horizontal. Landscape. It's not going landscape. Because I set my portrait orientation, it doesn't go landscape anymore. That's one indicator that probably you did it right. Say that again. You have you should build it again. Yes, if you've changed anything on your project, you should build again, and then put it back on your device. <coughs> All right, so we spent this time looking at this config file. There are other things we could add to it. There are other platform-specific things we could do. Remember, in this class, we're going to focus on Android because we are most we are able to do it most easily. We have all the software already set up. But this config file controls all aspects, all basic aspects of your app. We will be revisiting this project again, I mean this file, a little bit later because eventually when we're ready to publish it, well, it's no longer going to be August 7th, so we might have to change that at some point. Um, let's take one more break, and when we come back, we will, we will work more with what we've got here. So it's 8.22. We'll take a break until 8.32, and then we will go on.